surprise surprise another video about leica welcome to your 420th episode of the leica m6 it shouldn't surprise anybody by how renowned leica is and the heavy price tag that it comes with i bought mine for a pretty high dollar amount and during covid it has only skyrocketed from there because i guess people were bored with their gear and wanted to spend money let me tell you how i arrived to the point of owning one of the grails of the photography world Two thousand and ten, I was four eleven. I had a buzz cut and some money in my frog wallet to buy my first camera. I was searching through Best Buy for my first digital point and shoot, and I stumbled across a camera called the Leica M9. It looks like a point and shoot, but it costs more than the value of all the cars my family owned combined. And I remember saying something along the lines of, "Damn, who would pay that much for a point and shoot camera?" Twenty seventeen, Kai W, the goat uploaded this video of the Leica M10 when it first came out. And I remember seeing in that video, Kai W was at a Leica event and all these people look so snooty, so uptight, hoity-toity. And I just really didn't like the crowd that was associated with the Leica brand in that video. I barfed in my brain and I said, damn, who would ever want to be in that Leica crowd? Fast forward to 2020, I'm doing YouTube. It's popping off, film photography, digital photography. One thing led to another, and I ended up buying the Leica M6. It is my second favorite camera of all time. After a year of owning this camera though, there are a lot of things that I love about it, and a couple things that I really freaking hate about it too. The first thing that I really like about the M6 is the build quality and the simplicity of its design. This thing is built like a tank and even though it's not made of brass like the Leica M3 which many Leica purists hail as the best Leica ever made, it's still super solid, it's incredibly small, it's the same length as my iPhone 12 Pro Max or maybe even shorter. The sleek and minimal design of the camera, especially in all black, is super non-distracting so that you're more focused on the shooting rather than paying attention to the camera itself. Although it does look nice when it's sitting on your table. And the camera is fully mechanical, save for the light meter. Uh, it kind of needs a battery, but if the battery dies, you could still use the camera, unlike the Voigtlander Bessa RA series. One thing that's great about fully mechanical film cameras is that it's more easily repairable than ones with electronic counterparts like the Contax T2 or the Mamiya RZ67. It's not impossible to fix those cameras, but it is much harder to find someone who can. The second thing that I really like about the camera is the very non-distracting feel to it. It's really hard to explain, but once I tie my neck strap around my wrist and I'm, like I'm ready to go and I'm secured for either street photography or just carrying around in general, it doesn't really pull my attention away from walking around and actually paying attention to the scene versus an SLR where I'm always fidgeting with the settings and, you know, to each his or own like preference or opinion about that. That might not be the case for you, but for me, it's again, it's, it's really hard to explain, but 
it just feels like a pure extension of me. It doesn't feel like I'm holding a camera, even though I know it's a camera. Okay, so there are many great things to owning one of these bad boys, whether it's the Leica M2 all the way to the M10 or the SL series or the Qs. Look, they're all great and all, but there are some dark sides of owning one of these cameras. One of the things that I really hate about the Leica system is the repairs and the cost of it. Early in the year, mid-January, I had to get my M6 service because there were these obtrusive light leaks coming through and burning all my film. And I didn't even know that this camera was capable of having light leaks, but I got a quote from Leica and they said that the ballpark for fixing the light leak problem would be around $300, which is crazy expensive. And don't be an idiot like me. Don't get your stuff serviced by Leica themselves. Go to a third party repair shop like YYE or DAG. They could take care of everything up until the point you have to repair something like the light meter. If you have the M4 and below, you don't have to worry about that at all because those cameras don't have light meters. So I ended up sending my M6 back to Germany, back to the motherland to have those light leaks fixed. And I heard back three weeks later saying that, hey, you have other problems with your M6 as well. And I said over the phone like, oh, is it okay if we can only like keep it to the light leak repair? Like it's already like $300, $350. So I like, no, we want to replace other things like the rewind knob, the leatherette, clean the viewfinder, uh, replace the circuit board of the light meter. And like, they just kept racking up all these things. I'm like, why do I need any of these things? And I guess according to Leica, if they receive one of their products, they want all their products out there in the wild to be up to Leica code, to the Leica standard. So after they pretty much listed off the entire grocery list of repairs that I had to make, the ballpark price that they gave me was $900 to $1,000 in repairs. And that blew my mind and it pissed me off that I had to pay that much. And they wouldn't give my camera back unless I paid for it. Like I couldn't just have the light leaks fixed. They had to repair the entire thing or not. And that's just, I guess, how they run their own business. Not only was it super expensive, but it cost a lot of time as well. It took approximately six months to get my camera back and waiting that long was pretty excruciating because I love using the camera, but they have to take their time. It's like a standard, so they're gonna take their like a time too. That's just German engineering for you. Like any German engineering that you have, whether it's cameras or cars, it's gonna cost you for the maintenance. The second thing that I dislike is not really about the product, but the people who own the product, or at least some of them. There's this unspoken tension in the film community, let alone the Leica community, that you have to be of this certain skill level, or you have to have produced this amount of work, or have this kind of look to own a Leica. Pretty much what I'm talking about are the gatekeepers. This definitely doesn't happen to everybody, but personally speaking, I experienced some form of gatekeeping where there was a lot of opposition for me purchasing the M6 and I kept getting bombarded with uh, other suggestions of other M mount cameras like the Voigtlanders and the Zeiss cameras, although they're really good alternatives. But if you know what you want and what you want is a Leica, then go ahead and get it. It doesn't matter what kind of photographic background you have. It's just a camera at the end of the day. It doesn't make you better at all. You don't have to be this five-star photojournalist from New York. You don't have to be this all-star fashion photographer from London. It's just a camera. And besides, and as a film camera, the body doesn't even do anything for the image. It comes down to the film stock, the lens, and the photographer behind the camera. So to gatekeep a camera, let alone an art form, is hilarious. It's hilariously insecure. I personally like to photograph a lot of things on this camera, whether it's hanging out with my friends in LA, or walking the streets of Chinatown, or just making photos of still life around neighborhoods surrounding me. Like all cameras, it is just a tool, and if the tool works for you and it's non-distracting and inspires you to go out there and shoot and create some great photographs, then by all means, you should get that tool. 
personally speaking, I'm super trash at street photography. I'm still a little bit scared. My compositions are whack. Sometimes my zone focusing is super off, but I'm getting better. And this camera inspires me to get out there and shoot and to practice. So that's all I have for you guys in this video. Make sure you like this video, subscribe and leave a comment down below about what you think about the Leica camera system. Would you ever want to buy one? I think they're super dope cameras, but there are tons of alternatives out there that could be a, even an even better tool for you or for somebody else. But if you want a Leica, get it if you have the money and the scratch for it. So that's all I have for you guys in the video, and I will see you guys in that next one. Peace.